MAD pathway is in reality very complex. And unfortunately, when attempting to overcome the age-related decline in NAD plus levels, most people think that all that's required is to simply supplement with one of the NAD plus precursors. Those of course being either NMN or NR. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Unless we also address three other interrelated, critically important problematic issues, then we may actually be doing ourselves more harm than good. So today, we're going to look at exactly what those three problematic issues are and how we can easily address them. And in doing so, we'll be able to achieve maximum NAD plus precursor benefits with a total absence of potential harm. After all, NMN and NR are not cheap supplements, so who wouldn't want to make sure they're not wasting their money, never mind potentially causing themselves harm. So let's proceed to find out how to get those NAD plus precursors earning their keep and keeping you young. And very quickly, before moving on, here's a 10% discount code for the filler-free, third-party lab-tested NMN and NR capsules that I use. And there's a link in the video description for anyone that's interested in taking advantage of that. The first thing that's important to understand is that as we age, our NAD levels aren't declining because our cells have any shortage of the raw materials required to make NAD+. In reality, they're declining due to several integrated negative processes that are taking place, following which, our cells progressively lose their once youthful ability to both manufacture and recycle NAD+, thereby resulting in a deficit. One problem is that old cells use up more NAD, because as they age, they accumulate more damage and inflammation. And since NAD is required for important repair pathways in the cell that are trying to fix this damage, those demands on NAD can be huge. Worse still, not only do aging cells consume more NAD, the NAD recycling pathway, or salvage pathway as it's commonly referred to, also becomes impaired in later life. And let me explain why that's such a big deal. The NAD recycling pathway requires an enzyme called NAMPT, which is a rate-limiting enzyme that is in effect the bottleneck in the whole process. The less NAMPT that's available, the less NAD that gets recycled. So you can understand its high importance. Lower levels of NAMPT simply means that less recycling of nicotinamide into NAD plus takes place. Unfortunately, the NAMPT enzyme declines with age. This is one of the main reasons why our NAD plus levels are declining as we get older. The situation is further compounded by the fact that older cells are using more NAD than younger cells. And this is due to the increased activity of damage repair systems. So what we essentially have are large amounts of NAD being used up and broken down into nicotinamide, which although there's an available pathway to recycle it, this capacity is being severely impeded by a lack of the NAMPT enzyme. But I'm afraid it gets worse still, because when the recycling process is unable to cope with the demands put on it, nicotinamide, rather than being recycled back into new NAD, starts to build up in the cell. Now this unwanted buildup of nicotinamide is not a good thing and it can lead to damaging problems that we'll discuss shortly. I'm sure you've probably already worked out that if we now just start ingesting NMN or NR supplements without addressing this issue, it's likely only going to make things worse by adding to the excess nicotinamide produced. Thankfully, however, there is something we can do to increase our NAMPT levels, thereby helping to recycle our NAD and reduce the buildup of nicotinamide. And I'll be telling you exactly how you can do that when we move on to the solution section of this presentation. Our bodies are programmed to get rid of anything that our cells consider to be a waste product. Now when that is used and broken down in our cells by such things as PARPs and sirtuins, it's then output as nicotinamide. And when our recycling pathway is working efficiently as it does when we're young, then as we already discussed, nicotinamide is simply recycled straight back into NAD. But when the pathway doesn't work well, for example as a result of aging, then we experience a buildup of nicotinamide in the cell, which then must be gotten rid of. Our cells address this by increasing the expression of another enzyme called NMNT. NMNT then adds a methyl group to nicotinamide, which functions to signal the cell to excrete it, ridding the cell of any excess nicotinamide. So what we find is this. As we age, we experience increased expression of NAMT since the cell is actively trying to remove ever-increasing amounts of excess nicotinamide since it's no longer being recycled efficiently. And unfortunately, there's a price to pay for that. 
and that price is our cells now require a huge amount of methyl groups in order to process the excess nicotinamide. And this can result in methyl donor depletion, which means that our cells could potentially have insufficient methyl groups available to satisfy the demands of other important bodily processes. Now again, thankfully, there is a solution, and of course I will reveal it shortly. But first, we're going to look at the third and final problematic issue that needs to be addressed. Here we're going to discuss the highly important membrane protein known as CD38, short for Cluster of Differentiation 38. In simple terms, CD38 acts as an enzyme that uses NAD to produce cyclic ADP ribose, a secondary messenger for the cell. Now the issue we have to deal with is that CD38 expression increases dramatically as we age. And although we do indeed need CD38, what we definitely don't want are elevated levels of it. The problem is that CD38 uses a huge amount of NAD. In fact, to create just one molecule for its downstream messenger, CD38 has to metabolize at least 100 molecules of NAD. And that does have its consequences. The reality is that even a relatively modest increase in CD38 levels will result in a massive decrease in the amount of NAD available to the cell. Fortunately, however, there is a solution. We can in fact easily inhibit CD38 and successfully increase our cellular NAD plus levels by as much as 50%. And I'll be revealing just how we can do that shortly. But first, we're going to begin the solution section of the video by first addressing problem number one, those depleted NAMPT enzyme levels. As you can see, optimizing our bodily NAD systems as we age is a tad more complex than simply chucking a load of NMN or NR at it. There are several interrelated processes taking place, all of which need to be addressed if we want to be sure of avoiding any deleterious effects caused by any potential weak link. So let's now deal with the first of those by looking at what we can do to boost the age-related decline in our NAMPT levels, thereby improving the efficiency of our NAD salvage pathway. There are two health supplements available that can function to increase your declining NAMPT levels. The first of those is quercetin. Now you can find my in-depth presentation explaining quercetin's many benefits elsewhere on the channel. So here, I'll just mention its effect on the enzyme in question. Quercetin is a polyphenolic flavonoid, and studies have shown it to increase SIRT1 expression and activity by increasing NAMPT activity, thereby increasing NAD plus production due to increased nicotinamide recycling through the NAD salvage pathway. The optimal quercetin dosage to achieve these effects is around 800 mg daily. And if you'd like to take advantage of a 10% discount on the third-party lab-tested filler-free quercetin capsules that I use, then here's an exclusive discount code from Do Not Age. And you can find a link to that product in the video description. The second supplement that can activate the NAMPT enzyme is alpha-lipoic acid, or ALA for short. ALA has been shown to activate the cellular energy sensor AMPK, which in turn activates the NAMPT enzyme. ALA also acts on another pathway that promotes the conversion of NADH to NAD+. Now, in aging cells, the ratio of NAD+, to NADH, tends to shift towards NADH, which is unfavorable in terms of the energy status of the cell. So this rebalance is a very good thing. ALA is available as a supplement in both natural and synthetic forms, or as a combination of the two. Stick with a natural form only, known as RALA, which works much better. Doctor's Best and Life Extension are my preferred products here, and I provided a link to them in the video description, together with a 10% discount code. Now, 200 milligrams daily should get the job done, and by the way, ALA should always be taken on an empty stomach. Something that costs nothing, which has also been shown to benefit your NAMPT levels, is regular exercise especially short-duration, high-intensity exercise such as interval training or weightlifting. Next, we're going to look at the solution to problem number two, that methylation issue. Replenishing your methyl pool can be easily accomplished by supplementing with trimethylglycine, or TMG for short. Now, I have a complete presentation on this supplement already available on the channel, so please watch that to learn about TMG's many amazing benefits. Here I'll just briefly explain that TMG is basically the amino acid glycine with three methyl groups attached. 
and it's able to effectively replenish those diminishing methyl groups we discussed earlier by acting as a methyl donor. Common dosage is around 1 gram per day, and it can be taken with or without food. And if you'd like to take advantage of a 10% discount on the TMG capsules that I use, then here's a discount code from Do Not Age. And you can find a link to this product in the video description. Next, let's take a look at the solution to problem number 3, that's CD38 issue. The last thing on our list that we need to address is that elevated CD38 issue and the huge toll it's placing on our cellular NAD plus levels. Thankfully, there is a supplement available that's incredibly effective at inhibiting CD38, and that supplement is Apigenin. Now, I already have an in-depth Apigenin presentation available on this channel, so please watch that when you can. The ideal Apigenin dosage for lowering those damaging elevated CD38 levels is from 500 to 750 milligrams per day, and it's best taken in the evening with a meal. And here's an exclusive 10% discount code from Do Not Age, who produced the third-party lab-tested Philip-free Apigenin capsules that I use. And you can find a link to the product in the video description. Before we move on to our final conclusions, I should also tell you that the aforementioned supplement quercetin also possesses CD38 inhibition properties. Nothing light to the degree of Apigenin, but of course it all helps. So those were the three critical issues that need to be both understood and addressed by anyone taking or planning to take an NAD plus precursor supplement. If you follow the guidelines presented in this video, then you can rest assured that not only are you getting the maximum benefits from your NAD plus precursor, more importantly, you won't potentially be doing yourself harm. And remember, taking a holistic approach to your supplements is always a wise strategy because where your body is concerned, nothing ever works in isolation. Many thanks for watching, and lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.